What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Forever News! In today's episode, we've got some stories to talk about. For starters, we got a massive update for the Boruto Naruto Next Generation's anime, in particular some episode titles and a little information on those episodes for May, that if you're a manga rated, you know what's up. If you're an anime only, you're about to know what's up because yeah, it, it's about to be fire, flames, fuego. Next up, we got a story on Fire Force taking a massive win, being nominated for a big award from Kodansha. So we'll be getting into that one. Small update for the One Piece manga incoming. We got Con confirmation that a certain manga that we talked about in one of the recent episodes of Forever News will be coming to an end it is basically cancelled coming to an end from Shonen Jump we'll talk we got a story for an anime that has a very controversial trailer uh, or it's been announced that this series is getting an anime Tesla note and there's a trailer for it and you're gonna understand why I'm telling you oh shit this is controversial is uh a uh, easy word to put it, I guess you could say. We'll, we'll, we'll dive in. We got a spicy story. Very, very spicy from one of the co-founders of Ghibli. And uh, yeah, something he said about Miyazaki, the legendary anime director. A lot of people were like, whoa, that's a, a little spicy at the mouth there, fam. Miyazaki's a legend, but yeah, <laughs> we're going to talk. Got an update for the author of the Rikudo manga. He's starting a new work, so we're going to talk about that one a bit. We also got an update on the quintessential Quinn Tuplets, the sales figures for that one. Y'all know the quintessential Quinn Tuplets is a huge one. If you've been following my updates on, you know, the sales and Shonen Jump and things like that, it's been massive. And yeah, the quintessential quintuplets doing big numbers or did big numbers because it's over now we got a couple of updates in particular one is more personal regarding the seven deadly sins author yeah we're gonna talk because some of the author comments he's been saying lately um uh, just seems a little worrisome for me honestly so yeah I, I wanted to address it we will talk we talked recently about shueisha's highest print run volumes uh well let's talk shogakugan they're the publishers behind like a uh, case closed and things like that so we're gonna take a look at their list unless you've been living under a rock then you know that attack on titan has come to an end we got a little bit of a story on that one alongside a message from the magazine besatsu magazine that publishes attack on titan a special message they brought forth with the final chapter yeah we're, we're gonna take a look at that and an update for the tokyo revengers anime an episode count in particular so yeah a ton of stories with this episode without further ado people let's jump into another exciting episode of Whatever News. the only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related and we don't bore you we get into it let's do it for no matter how you know get it done no matter Okay, people, for starters, let's talk some Boruto anime, uh, because according to this, it says Boruto anime episode titles for first half of May have been revealed. And it says the Boruto Naruto Next Generation anime continues its Kawaki arc that started with episode 188 leading into the month of May. Here are the titles for the episodes listed for the first half of the month of May. Uh, episode 197, Delta, May 2nd, and episode 198, Monsters, May 9th. And just getting a little bit more information courtesy of Organic Dynasty. Store, it says for the episode Delta in order to skillfully gain control over using karma Boruto decides to train with Kawaki under an actual combat scenario Himawari and Naruto who is his father and the Hokage watch over them attentively Boruto and Kawaki have the opportunity to activate karma and wield it against one another but at that moment one of the top brass of Kara Delta joins up with Kashin Koji on a pursuit to track down Kawaki's whereabouts for some reason Kashin Koji is able to slip easily through through Konohagakure's sensory system. Kashin Koji then trespasses upon the village, leaving Delta behind. And so, she has no other option but to wait upon Kashin Koji's return. And then for Monsters, on May 9th, it says, Delta forcibly intrudes upon the village in an attempt to retrieve Kawaki and appears in front of Boruto and the others. Naruto stands in the way to oppose Delta in order to protect Boruto, Himawari, and Kawaki. Delta's entire body has been remodeled with scientific ninja tools that she can freely use that will go to to attack Naruto. In order to compete with her, Naruto also uses the power of the QB in order to settle the battle. Both of them possess combat capabilities that make them seem like monsters.
monsters in their own fight when they fiercely clash against one another. Oh my god, the Boruto anime is about to be lit. It seems as though if we even going to have any like, you know, slice of life episodes or anime canon episodes, it's only going to be short lived because straight away early May, we're going to be jumping right into some canon stuff from the manga and just in general some epic shit of Naruto throwing down. I can't freaking wait. Delta, monsters, let's go. Next up, we got an update for Fire Force. Apparently, Fire Force is nominated for a 45th annual Kodansha Award. Kodansha is holding its 45th annual award ceremony to honor some of its top manga series. Fire Force was among the fray of nominees for Best Shonen Series. The three remaining nominees for the category are Blue Lock, Soso No Freedom, which I believe we just talked about that one recently, and that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Now, to be honest with you, the one that I'm really familiar with out of that list is Fire Force in terms of, like, I I've seen a decent amount of it and I've read a, a little bit of it, um, but I've heard a lot of big things about Blue Lock and that time I got reincarnated as a slime is huge. So I could see between those three, Soso No Freedom, I, I just don't see it winning, but you never know, I could be surprised. Uh, but Blue Lock has a big fan base and the slime series, I, I think the slime series is going to take it. That's just me. I just know that it's really massive, but I'm still rooting for Fire Force, fam. Come on, come through, heat it up, let's go, Fire Force. I'm rooting for you, fam. Moving forward, we got a small update for the One Piece manga. One Piece manga goes on break. H to the One Piece manga will be going on break for issue number 20 of Weekly Shonen Jump magazine. The series will return the following issue, 21 slash 22, with a lead color page which i want to say not this week but the following week shonen jump is going to be going on break that's why they're doing a double issue so yeah one piece it'll be on break and i think after that the magazine will be on break so it'll be a little bit in between one piece chapters but yeah at the very least we know it's you know the standard routine of one piece going on a break every now and then um i think it's what every three weeks every four weeks something like that that one piece goes on a break but yeah either way shout out to oda get your rest like always you've been doing this shit for 20 plus years the fact that you get a regular break is well deserved and i'm glad shonen and jump continues that routine moving forward we talked recently in an episode of forever news that it was rumored highly suggested that the toriko author's new manga build king would be coming to an end it wasn't confirmed or anything like that but now we got confirmation from the unofficial weekly shonen jump uh but basically it says toriko author's build king manga confirmed ending toriko author mitsutoshi shimabukuro's latest work build king will be ending in the 19th issue of weekly shonen jump magazine with its 20th chapter build king began serialization in the 50th issue so basically at the 20 chapter mark and it's only been going since november toriko mangaka's new work it's wild and i want to do a video at some given point talking about this but i've noticed a pattern that a lot of veteran authors that tried to return to shonen jump have not succeeded or at the very least when they try to return to do like a regular serialization obviously the creator of bleach he came back but with like a small little mini series of four chapters so you cannot count that against people that are trying to be there for years upon years naruto creator tried it with samurai 8 it failed we got the Toriko author coming back. We've had quite a few, you know, the Kuroko no Basket author tried with that ro Robot X laser beam. That didn't work. I mean, Satoshi's uh, Build King. Again, I've heard a lot of bad things about it. I enjoyed the first couple chapters, but I never liked seeing that because it's kind of like a stain on their record. Like, you know, he had a massive series, Toriko, huge anime crossovers with One Piece and Dragon Ball Z, an anime crossover with Dragon Ball Z. Like, that's insane. So to come back and only last for 20 chapters, about half of what Kishimoto's Samurai 8 did, it's not good. Not good. Hopefully, Shimmer Book Girl comes back and gets back on his feet and does something big. But yeah, Build King coming to an end with its 20th chapter. Next up, okay, a little bit of controversy for a series called Tesla Note. Apparently, Tesla Note by the author of Tiger and Bunny gets a TV anime. Now, Tiger and Bunny, I want to say it was around early 2010s, maybe like 2013, 2012. That was very, very big. I remember just seeing it everywhere on Neon Alley. If you don't know what Neon Alley was, it was a streaming service by Viz Media that was like available, I think, on like the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox box or something like that but yeah tiger and bunny was very very big and apparently the author of that has a new series called tesla note and according to this it says on wednesday it was announced by kodansha that tesla note the manga by masafumi nishida tadayoshi kubo and kota sanomiya would be receiving a tv anime adaptation set to be released in 2021 and you know that's great all fine and dandy except and i've seen the trailer myself to be honest with you the trailer uh showcased the anime and if you've seen or heard of X Arms, the Crunchyroll original anime. It basically looks like a fancy PS2 game cutscene. Like, that's what it looks like. So, a lot of people are very upset with it. I saw the trailer and I was like, 
yeah, I think I'm going to stay away from this one. <laughs> like, if we're talking X-Arms, and again, if you know what X-Arms is, like, yeah, this is, it doesn't look good. Probably, if you're a Tesla Note fan, just stick with the manga. And that really sucks, because the author of Tiger and Bunny, you know, Tiger and Bunny was dope, but... Yeah, maybe the manga is good and just it got a shitty hand for a PS2 anime. <laughs> Moving forward, we got a little bit of drama regarding one of the creators or founders, if I'm not mistaken, of Studio Ghibli, Hayao Miyazaki. Because according to this, uh, one of the founders of Studio Ghibli said that Hayao Miyazaki has mummy issues. Toshio Suzuki answers fans' questions about Studio Ghibli on his official Twitter account. Last Friday, Ghibli co-founder Toshio Suzuki held an impromptu Q&A session on Studio Ghibli's official Twitter account to commemorate a TV screening of Howl's Moving Castle in Japan. Along the way, he revealed interesting trivia about the creation of the film and shared insight on Hao Miyazaki as a creator. Some highlights from the Q&A are, when creating Howl's Moving Castle, Miyazaki based Sophie off his own mother and Hal off his own ideal self. According to Suzuki, all of Miyazaki's heroines are based off his mother when she was young because Miyazaki has a mother complex. And to be honest with you, maybe like the translation makes it seem a certain way or maybe in our culture it seems a certain way. I just, I can't believe that a co-founder of Ghibli would say something wild like that talking about Miyazaki. Like, first of all, Miyazaki is a very grumpy old man that says some very rude stuff. So I could imagine him getting very offended by a Ghibli creator, co-founder saying, hey, uh, you got a little bit of mommy issues, man. Like when I read this, I was like baffled. Like there's some other stuff on there, but this is the main thing that a lot of people were talking about uh, in terms terms of like you know from this q a from the co-founder like holy cow you know the the fact that miyazaki now anytime i watch a miyazaki work that has like a mom in it i'm going to think like oh there goes miyazaki's mommy issues again <laughs> and that's no slight to how miyazaki again legendary creator i respect everything he's done I'm not a fan of some of the things he's said outside of his works in terms of like being disrespectful and rude but yeah one of the co-founders says something wild and a lot of people been talking about it like yo miyazaki having mommy issues I guess. Moving forward, the author of Rikudo has started a new manga and weekly Young Jump magazine. Toshimitsu Matsubata, the creator of boxing manga Rikudo, will be starting a new series in weekly Young Jump magazine. Uh, I remember Rikudo. I remember I had a friend that would not stop talking about it, saying that it was just like the greatest. And I remember seeing some of the art, like it was really, really hype. It, it looked really dope. And uh, at the time, I just, you know, didn't really get into it, but I just heard nothing but praise. I remember the main character kind of looked like Kitoa from Hunter x Hunter. So to hear that he's starting something else i might be giving it a, a, a look just because like the friend that i had at the time i trusted his recommendations very heavily and he loved the rikudo manga so if the author's starting something else it might be good and young jump usually has like more mature titles anyway so it's always worth giving them a shot. Moving forward, a small update or a major update for the quintessential quintuplets manga because it currently has 15 million copies in circulation. It says, Negi Haruba's quintessential quintuplets manga reports having 15 million copies in circulation, including physical and digital sales. The series ran in weekly shonen magazine from August 2017 through February 2019. And the series, of course, spawned two anime seasons with a third season confirmed in production. That is pretty freaking awesome. Like, 15 million copies in circulation and I've I've seen so many times of like quintessential quintuplets selling this mound you know coming in the top of the top 10 and things like that so I'm not surprised by any means 15 million I am surprised as a whole like I've always was surprised like this series really a, a big stepper selling like a lot like really but yeah quintessential quintuplets big sales okay we got a couple of updates regarding the author of the seven deadly sins i mean for starters this is more seven deadly sins related not the author it says kodanchi usa licensed the seven deadly sins original sins short story collection and in addition the seven deadly sins manga will be getting omnibus editions and box sets for manga part one and two that's really dope shout outs to that seven deadly sins had some amazing stuff in there but something that i noticed and i get a little bit worried just because things like addiction are really real in the last Last couple of author comments for the seven deadly sins because in case you don't know the seven deadly sins author is currently working on a spin-off series sequel series in weekly shonen magazine called knights of the apocalypse and uh one of the things he said i think it was about two weeks ago now was now that i think of it i haven't gone out drinking since starting this series that makes me happy which i was like okay that, that that's dope but then in the recent author comments he said something along the lines of i'm really hooked on whiskey now ah spirits are the best and when he said that to be honest with you the the fact that he's congratulated himself for not drinking and then now he's hooked on drinking just like you know i'm gonna keep an eye make sure uh 
you know, sending positive wishes, positive vibes towards this guy because addiction is no joke. Uh, you know, I know it sounds wild as shit that I'm, you know, bringing it up, but like the whole DMX situation has really been bothering me uh, the last week or so. Um, so yeah, when I hear anything, like especially a, a mangaka that he's been through some stuff with health and things like that, uh, just sending best wishes and hopefully it's, I, I'm being over dramatic or hopefully I'm looking too much into it. But yeah, sending positive vibes to Nakaba Suzuki. Um, yeah, hope everything is okay. Moving forward, we got a small update for Shogakugan. It says, here are the highest initial prints of Shogakugan series, including Weekly Shonen Sunday from April 2020 to March 2021. And uh, on it, at the very tippy top, is something that is to be expected. The first two slots at that is Detective Conan number 98 with 680,000 copies. And then number two, Detective Conan Wild Police Story number two at 400,000. So um, you, you could tell that, like I, I've said this before numerous times, but Shogakugan, the publishing company, is the third most popular. There's Shueisha at the top. They're the ones with One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, Dragon Ball Z, etc., etc. Then there's uh, Kodansha that has Attack on Titan and Fairy Tail. And then there's Shogakugan that has like Detective Conan. I believe they had Magi. So they, they have some titles, but you can definitely see the massive difference that the biggest ones is 680,000, 400,000. And then honestly, I'm not really familiar with many of the other ones. Free Eden is at 300,000. We just learned of that one. Major is a big one, 200,000. But yeah, um, just shows the difference. And, and manga sales like between the publishing companies like Shogakugan they do numbers like don't get me wrong 680,000 <laughs> anybody would wish to sell that but um in comparison to like Shueisha it's definitely a lot lower okay most of you may know by now uh, unless you've been living on a rock Attack on Titan has come to an end. The manga released its 139th chapter. Uh, Attack on Titan manga has officially come to an end. Besatsu magazine was released today in Japan. And within it is the final chapter of the Attack on Titan manga series. After 11 years and 7 months, the Colossal series concludes with its 139th chapter. So the manga has officially concluded. Leaks and all. It's, it's out there in Japan, the magazine. But then also following up, Besatsu magazine sends a special message to Attack on Titan readers following the finale. The editorial department at Besatsu Magazine included a special message to readers with the release of the final chapter of the Attack on Titan manga. To the readers of Attack on Titan, this world that did not exist until 2009 was made into words and pictures, given meaning, turned into a story, printed in the first issue of Besatsu Shonen Magazine, and serialized for 11 years and 7 months by Hajime Isayama's hands. By no means were they 11 years and 7 months of continued good news. The series was visited by troubles, sadness, and goodbyes. Even and so we believe that nothing is more valuable than people being able to share in emotions that cannot be put into words through a story. It makes us happy that we were able to feel that way with readers and partners by way of Attack on Titan. Though the series has come to an end, these memories are sure to always warm our heart. Thank you for reading. Our battle is only getting started. The editorial department of Vesatsu Shonen Magazine. I'm curious when they say our battle is only getting started. Like, are they meaning the magazine as a whole? Because it seems as though this basically was the launching pad for Attack on Titan. Or could it mean the future of Attack on Titan? Like, it's just such a colossal, no pun intended, series that for them to completely put it down and say, okay, everything for it is done. I don't know. Uh, I'm really curious what that last part, our battle is only getting started, means. I mean, the manga's over now, right? Like, who knows? If you've read the manga, then you know what I mean of like, you never know. And either way, no matter how you feel about the Attack on Titan ending, salute to Hajime Isayama, Besatsu Magazine, Kodansha, everybody that had a hand in putting this out because for the last decade or so, it's been a phenomenal story. It's given us so many memorable moments and... Yeah, it was a hell of a ride, so shout outs to Attack on Titan. And lastly, just a quick update on the Tokyo Revengers anime. Apparently, Tokyo Revengers anime episode count has been confirmed. The spring 2021 anime from Liden Films, Tokyo Revengers, has been confirmed to have a count of 24 episodes which that's awesome because i'm really excited for this one this season doesn't seem as big as i thought it would be especially considering in terms of like on official sites like netflix and things like that a lot of series like eden zero and shaman king aren't available and i just for convenience reasons just mainly stick to the officials so it looks like tokyo revengers is going to be a big one for me because i'm really excited about it i never read the manga so i'm looking forward to that one and megalobox but that's a different story so yeah 24 episodes here we go people we also got a story on black 
Clover. Yes, I'm so excited to talk about this, to be honest with you, because with the Black Clover anime ending with episode 170 on, it was March 30th, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of people were like, yo, what's going to happen with Black Clover's manga? Is it going to start going down? At the very least, we know for now, it is doing pretty well. According to this, it says, Black Clover cracks top 10 most sold manga series of the week. The sales tracking site Oricon released its chart for the top 10 most sold series for the week of March 29th through April 4th. This also includes back catalog volumes. Despite several major series making the list, Black Clover's manga managed to crack the top 10 coming in at number 9 with 86,255 copies sold, which I've heard that there were several issues with every series at that, so this number probably would have been a lot larger, which we'll talk about in the next one when we get the next updated sales of how much the numbers are going to be for that week, because again, I heard there was a major shortage for everything across the board. For the week, the series manages to make waves despite its anime recently coming to an end. Other notable series that made this week's list include Jujutsu Kaisen at number 1 with 751,000 copies, Demon Slayer at number 3 with 367,000, My Hero at number 4 with 341,000, Doctor Stone number 5, 153,000, Attack on Titan number 6 with 142,000, and Chainsaw Man at number 7 with 101,000. And again, these are series sales so I'm imagining yeah these sound really low for like the entirety including backlogs of these series only selling those numbers probably Black Clover did a lot more including the latest volume which I can't wait to see what the numbers are but yo for a series not the latest volume the series to be in the top 10 most sold of the week that is really good hopefully we could keep it up hopefully a lot of anime only said oh shit the anime is over let's jump into the manga we only got 17 chapters to catch up anyway let's buy the back volumes let's have a blast hopefully that's the case and Black Clover Top 10, baby, let's go alongside, because this list is elite. I'm not even going to lie. Great manga all across the board from Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero Demon Slayer, uh, Chainsaw Man. Great stuff there. And shout out to Black Clover, number 9 out of 10. Great stuff. Okay, people, quick update. So the author of Tokyo Ghoul on Twitter, within like the last hour as I was editing this video, posted an amazing, immaculate art piece of Eren Yeager from Attack on Titan. I'd imagine this is an honor and celebration of Attack on Titan manga's ending and fam this just looks absolutely freaking insane but the author Tokyo Ghoul is one of the greatest artists out there and this just looks freaking amazing so major shout outs to Sui Ishida that's really really awesome like I just had to include this in here because yeah th this just looks insane and Sui Ishida on that pen game still he ain't lose a beat Hopefully he comes back with a new series soon. And I'm curious what you guys think about all the stories we covered in today's episode. Boruto anime episodes coming in May. Are you hyped for that big Naruto vs. Delta fight? Uh, Fire Force getting nominated for a Kodansha 45th award. Dope stuff. One Piece manga going on break. Your thoughts? Build King confirmed ending. Very, very shitty for Mitsutoshi Shimabukuro. Like, hopefully he lands on his feet afterwards. Tesla no to anime. Ooh, that trailer looks, ooh, x arms vibes. Uh, Miyazaki's mama issues. <laughs> Yo, Studio Ghibli co-founder is wildin' the fuck out. Rikudo author's next work. Looking forward to that. Quintessential quintuplets, 15 million. Dope. Seven Deadly Sins author. Again, sending nothing but positive vibes. Best wishes, prayers. Um, if he is dealing with anything, that would really suck. So, just... Wishing good stuff for him. Shogaku gone highest print runs. Your thoughts on the sales over there? Attack on Titan ending and Basatsu Magazine's final message to Attack on Titan fans. Think it could mean something for the future of the story? And Tokyo Revengers 24 episode count. Looking forward to it. And your thoughts on any of the stories we covered in today's episode? But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Hit that bell to get all notifications and if you want to follow any of my other social media links are in the description below i'm for never world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life boy have an awesome day peace in and you guys just watched another episode of for never have an awesome day <laughs>